today's story, The Ghost of Captain Balo. Come along, Cranston. We ought to find the mate of the Northern Queen and one of those waterfront saloons around here. I know you'll be interested in hearing his story. I'm sure I will. Tell me, Mr. Ware, what happened to the rest of the crew when the Northern Queen went down? Lost. Every man jack of them. This mate we're looking for is the only survivor. He just got port. The Northern Queen was your biggest freight ship, wasn't it? Biggest and best in the whole fleet, Princeton. It was smashed to bits. Well, how did it happen? I don't exactly know. I've heard some crazy explanations, but no facts. That's why I'm so anxious to talk to this mate. Maybe he can clear things up. You say the Northern Queen was smashed to bits. Where did it happen? On an uninhabited island, off the ship lanes in the middle of the Pacific. Uninhabited? Off the ship lanes? Well, then, what was your freighter doing there? That's just what I've got to find out. There's something strange about this whole business. Ten liners have been wrecked in the same spot during a score of years in the same manner. Uh, here, Cranston. Let's see if we can find the mate in this place. Hey, Cranston. Tell him that. All right. What do you have? Yeah. There'd be little trouble mustering a ship crew in this saloon, eh, Mr. Ware? Yeah, a shout would bring you enough men to man a boat from keel to bridge, Cranston. Oh, uh, here's my mate. Hi there, mate. Uh, I see you're still fit to ride a gale. Commodore, where, sir? It's right pleased I am to lay an eye on you again. I uh, want to talk to you. Can we go in the back room there? Aye, sir. Right in here. It'll be nice and quiet. <laughs> there, sir. This is better. Sit down, mate. Have a seat, Cranston. Thank you. I know you want to hear about the wreck of your ship, the Northern Queen. Yes. Mate... Give me the fact. That I will, sir. And it'll likely raise the hair on your head just as it's whitened mine. Uh, what happened? What caused the wreck of my ship? It was Captain Balo stayed her on the rock, sir. Well, Captain Balo wasn't master of the Northern Queen, was he? No, but he rode the bridge the night she broke up. Leastwise, his ghost did. Ghost? Aye. The ghost of Captain Balo held the wheel and all the men aboard couldn't budge it from his grip. That strong he was. Uh, now, what I want to know, mate, is what the Northern Queen was doing off her course. We'd sprung a leak in our freshwater tank, sir. The nearest land point was Balo Island. The skipper set the Northern Queen to the wind and steered a course for the island. The crew was again it, but it was that or die of thirst. Gentlemen... If I knew then what was before us, I'd have died a thousand times. Uh, what happened? Nothing, sir, till we were a few miles off the island. Then, Captain Balo's ghost took command. I most forgot, Mr. Cranston, I don't suppose you know about Captain Balo. No, but I'm very much interested. Well, sir, Captain Balo's been dead these 20 years or more. He was the last of the old square rigger skippers. It was the China trade he was in. On his last voyage out of the Orient, he carried two precious cargoes, a shipment of silver and his beautiful young wife. Captain Balo was quitting the sea to settle in South America. A oh, happy pair they were, sir, none happier. His crew, though, was the motliest collection of sea scum ever to sail or for the mast. Well, sir, they were just off the island that's now called after him. Captain Balo was at the wheel, his wife beside him. <laughs> the sea spray was washing her lovely face, and she was laughing into the wind. The crew was aft, heads together. We're fools if we don't, I tell you. We could do it easy. Captain bilo has got the silver lock in his cabin. Now well, we could make him give up the key. He'll never do it. Are we weaklings that we can't make him do it? He's only one man and we're a whole crew. There's enough silver to make us all rich for the rest of our lives. He's a much prettier cargo on the bridge beside him. His woman, eh? Silver comes from the earth. But a face like that could only come from above. I want silver. Yeah, well, my share goes for the other cargo. We share alike. Oh, how about yeah, that? Folks, we get the prize first. We argue about it afterwards. Come on. Uh, all right. All right. While a happy woman laughed beside a contented man, the crew crept slowly toward the bridge. <laughs> the 
laugh was cut short by the sight of the hard-faced men. Captain Bailow asked them what they wanted for. We want the key to your cabin, Captain Bailow, and we mean to get Use the key. Save yourself. He ordered the men below, but... We came for that silver cargo, and you ain't putting us off. Better give us the key piece, or we'll take it away from you. The All skipper right. reminded him it was mutiny. We know what it is. You don't have to tell us. Mutiny are not winning, Commander, and you're... We've had enough talk. Out with the key. Captain Bailow told them they'd get the key over his dead body. All right, then. Over your dead body it'll be, Captain Bailow. Come on, men. Grab him. Hey! hey. 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 Oh. me. Back him. Back him. Back him. Back him. Back him. While the men fought like hungry wolves, Captain Bailow's wife stood frozen in horror. Hand me that belaying pen. There you are. Um, oh. That ought to struggle a swab. The blow from the belaying pin stunned the skipper. He fell to the deck. The crew were on him, snapping like a bunch of jackals. All right, lift him up. Hey. Here we go. Right. No more now. Trouble. Heave him over the side. <laughs> Captain Bailow was half conscious when they threw him over the rail. He revived a bit when his body hit the water. He saw his ship with his wife aboard sailing away. Above the surge of the sea, he heard coming back on the wind... The pitiful wail of his lovely wife. Before the waters covered him up, Captain Bailow, with an oath on his lips, swore eternal vengeance on all men who sail the sea. Well, gentlemen, Captain Bailow's wife died soon after that. But he's had his revenge many times over. He takes the helm of any ship that ventures into the waters where he lost his life and steers it onto the rocks of Balo Island. You think that's how the Northern Queen was wrecked? I don't think, Mr. Cranston. I know. I'm not given to ghost stories, sir, but I saw the Northern Queen's propeller frozen so her big engines couldn't turn it over. There she rode, helpless on the tide, straight for the rocks. She was smashed to bits. Why are you so sure the ghost of Captain Bailo took command? Because I heard the warning. Warning? Aye, sir. I was just going off watch when I heard it, plain as I hear you. What was it? The pitiful wail of Captain Bailo's wife. I knew then the Northern Queen was done for. Another seaman and myself put a small boat over the side and rowed away. The other man died from exposure. I was picked up five days later by a liner. That's why I'm here now, gentlemen. And there's not enough money in all the world that'll get me back to Balo Island. Well, the wreck of the Northern Queen is still a mystery to me. Cranston, what do you think? What do I think? Mr. Ware, how would you and Mrs. Ware like to take a trip on my yacht with Miss Lane and myself? Trip? Where to? To Balo Island. <laughs> By George, it's funny. Here I am, owner of a fleet of ocean liners I haven't been to sea in years. Cranston, I'm glad you suggested this voyage. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it, Mr. West. Yeah. Oh, it's this, this salt air makes you sleepy. This is where Miss Lane have turned in long ago. Get off on a suit. Coming, Cranston? Yes, I'll join you below in just a moment. All right. Oh, good evening, Captain. Good evening, Miss Ware. Mr. Cranston. Yes, Captain. Any orders for tonight, sir? No. Hold it to the same course. Well, you haven't yet told me where we're heading, sir. No. What so? You mind, sir? Not at all, Captain. We're heading for Balo Island. Balo Island? Yes. You've heard of the place, I suppose? What seaman hasn't? And why in heaven's name do you want to go to that place, sir? I want to convince myself of something. It's a dangerous voyage, sir. You think we might be wrecked, is that it? Not only that, sir, but it means trouble with the crew. When they find out we're heading for those haunted waters, well, I hate to think of what may happen. Tell me, Captain, do you believe in this legend? Do you fear the ghost of Captain Balo? Yes, sir. I certainly do. Quiet, man. Quiet. I tell you, I 
saw the sailing orders. The chief engineer told me it's a fact. We're off for Baylow Island. Mr. Cranston must be crazy. Well, Mr. Cranston may be crazy enough to come here, but that don't mean we have to stay. What do you mean? We can make Mr. Cranston turn the ship back. <laughs> That's mutiny. You can be jailed for that. That may be worse than what may happen. We've got to do something. No crew's on watch tonight. Leastwise, not a man's asleep. They can't be far from that coast at Baylow Island now. If it wasn't so dark, you could see it off the port bow. That close? Aye. Suppose... Suppose Captain Baylow took command. I've asked you for Yes, but I just... I don't want to talk about it. What's that? Hear something? Yes. Listen. You hear it? Yeah. Sounds like a woman. That's it. It's her. Go to your man. Captain Baylow's wife. That's the warning. He'll come out of the sea now any minute. The ghost? Yes. We're lost. We're lost, they tell you. I'm out, sir. Keep quiet. There it is again. We've got to turn back. We've got to get out of these waters. I'm going to tell the skipper. We've got to get out. I want to get out of here. Yes, yes, yes. Really, there, you swab. Open the door. Quick, yes, yes. Here. What's going on here? I heard it. I heard it, Captain. What are you talking about, man? What did you hear? Uh, uh, Captain Bellow did. Why? You men are letting your imaginations run away with you. Now get below and stay no, quiet. No, I hear it as plain as a ship's belcher. we got to get out of these waters. We'll all be lost. What's going on, Captain? This man thinks he heard the wail of Captain Baylor's wife, Mr. Cranston. I don't just think, sir. I heard it. The other men heard it, too. Oh, that's nothing, man. Just the wind and the rigging, that's all. No, no, you've got to believe me, Mr. Cranston. It's still time to save ourselves. You've got... What? What's that? Our engines have stopped. Call the engine room. Aye, sir. There, you see, sir. Oi, hello, Bellows. Aye, aye, sir. What's that to the engine? We don't know, sir. They just stopped dead. The motor started smoking all of a sudden. Stand by and come in below. Aye, aye, sir. Range. The motors have all been shorted. They can't feed the engine. I knew it. It's the ghost. He's taking over. We lost. The ship's Get lost. Quiet, man. I'm getting out of here. The ship's on me. Don't go out there. Come back here. Uh, Captain, we've got to stop that man. He's gone mad. Stop that man. Stop him. We lost, I see. Oh. Turn on the board. Oh, there, Turn on the searchlight. Aye, aye, sir. You went off the board, Bob. Swing that Lord. light this way. What happened? One of our men leaped over the side, Margot. Leaped over, you say, Cranston? Yes, Mr. Ware. But why? Our engine stole. Poor fellow became crazed with fear. Oh, this is frightful, Lamont. I only hope we can find him in this heavy but sea. Cranston. There he is, Captain. Have you found him? No, I'm afraid, sir. There's not much of a chance in a sea like this. There's no sight of him. Oh, we've got to find him. We must. The men will do all they can up here. I've got to go below and see what can be done about our engine. What's our position, Cranston? We're just off the island, Mr. Ware. Is there much of a drift? Pretty heavy one. And it's toward the island. That means we may crash if the engines aren't started. Mr. Ware. Yes, Cranston? Help me lower one of our small boats. Small boat? What for? I'm going over to that island. Lamont. But what good would that do? The place is uninhabited. Nevertheless, I've got to see what's there. This is too dangerous. I don't want you to go out there alone. You and everybody else on this yacht are in great danger, Margot. I... I've gotten you all into it. I've got to try and get you out of it. Well, if you're going out there, Lamont, I'm going with you. Yeah. Here we are, Margot. We'll leave the boat beached here while we look around. Not much to see in this darkness. Oh, desolate place, isn't it? It's foolish of you to come, Margot. You should have taken my advice. Lamont. Huh? Look. Look over there. Well, what is it, Margot? Something's coming out of that clump of bushes. Oh, it's coming towards us. A man. A monster. Could it be the ghost of Captain Baylor? Don't be frightened, Margot. I've got my gun. Stand where you are. I'll shoot. What do you want? Do you hear me, man? Keep away, I said. Who? Who are you? I've come from that yacht off there. Then you're not one of Yandy's men. Well, who is Yandy? The devil. A monster. Do you live on this island? I die on this island. We understood it's uninhabited. Oh, there are people here, but not above the ground. What do you mean? They're buried in dark, damp dungeons. Yet they live. Who are these people? Survivors of ships wrecked on the rocks here. Anybody that ever sets foot on this island is never allowed to leave again. Go away. Go away before it's too late. I want to know about those prisoners. Their lives are spent in darkness. All day they work in the mines. Mines? 
At night, they're locked in dungeons. Always darkness. Never fresh air. Never light. Are you a captive here? I, captive and slave. I was the skipper of the Melly Moss. She was wrecked here some 15 years ago. I've been here ever since. But you're not confined to a dungeon. I found the secret exit. I steal out at night to watch the sea and hope. Lamont, something will have to be done for these unfortunate people. There's nothing, nothing you can do. Go away. Go away. Can you take me to the dungeons? I can, but I don't think I should. Please. I think I can help. No one can best Yandy. Perhaps I can. Uh, all right, then. Come along and see how dead men live. Careful. The guard is due along any minute. Keep close to me, Margot. This place is dark. I'm all right, Lamont. What's that? The dungeons. They're just below this crevice. You have to jump here. Right. Let me help you, Margot. There we are. This is all the light we ever see. A single flare. And Mark, look. Good heavens. Are these men? Uh, these are the ones that have gone blind from the dark. They can't work. So they must die of slow starvation. How horrible. How many men are here? Half a hundred. This is awful, Lamont. Men! Men! Look! Two from the outside world! They've come to help us! There's no help for us! Careful! Here comes the guard! Stay back, Marco. In here, he will pass. Get behind me, Marco. Tell me, men. Does this guard have the keys to the dungeon? Yes. What are you going to do, Lamar? Get those keys. Liberate these men. But how? Quiet, Margot. Here he comes. Uh, uh, yeah. There. That's done it. Now the keys. Yeah, here they are. Open the dungeons. Quick, Lamar. Yes, Margot. There we are. All right, men. Come on out. Come out. You're free. Don't you understand what I mean? It's no use, Lamont. These men are afraid to move. There's only one way to free them. I must remove the cause of their fear. Where will I find this Yandy? Yandy? Oh, you can't get near him. He lives and works in rooms carved out of solid rock. Where? Show me the rock. It's useless. But if you want to try, come with me. Margot. You go on, Lamont. I'm going to open the rest of these dungeons and try to coax these men out of this place. Yes, she will be safer here. There won't be another guard along before morning. Come along. Very well. But you will never get near Yandy alive. He's guarded day and night. I've got to get him. The lives of those men, the lives of my friends and crew depend on it. Can you make her out yet, Mr. Yandy? Yes. Yes, he's a yacht. A rich man's plaything. It'll soon be his coffin. They got the engines going again, sir. Very well. Turn on the black beam. Short the motors. Yes, sir. That's got him. She's helpless on the tide. Now, turn on the magno beam. Magnetize the rudder. Right. Got it. Hold her on it. Steer the rudder toward the rocks on the north end of the island. Yes, sir. There. <laughs> That's one more crew that will never be able to tell of the mineral wealth of this island. Your secret is still safe. I've guarded it for 18 years. Since the day I discovered it, no one will ever share the wealth or know it exists. And another wreck will be chalked up to the ghost of Captain Balo. Yes. Captain Balo has been a most convenient ghost. <laughs> a most plausible one. 
Nobody ever doubts him, it seems. <laughs> what was that? I heard it. Have you the radio key open? Oh, sir, I cut it before. <laughs> You're lying to me, you... No, no, I swear I'm not, Mr. Yandy. You... Don't, don't oh, No, Mr. Yandy, this is not a voice you can cut off with a flick of a dial. Yes. Who are you? I am the Shadow. Shadow? I've heard of him. He's the guy you can't see. Your use of the Captain Halo legend is at an end, Yandy. You've created havoc with your diabolically clever electrical inventions. Like a monster, you've destroyed men because of your insatiable greed. Well, Yandy, this is your finish. Yeah. The sea will be well rid of you, and poor Captain Baylor will rest peacefully in his sea grave. What's that? The slaves. They've escaped from their dungeons. Yes, Yandy, they're crawling out of the earth to vent their just hatred on you. Turn on the heat ray. Burn them up. Burn them to a crisp. Right. The tubes. They're all broken. My equipment is ruined. Completely, Mr. Yandy. My yacht is free of your clever magno beam, and those people down there will soon be done with you. I'm getting out. Out of my way. You're not getting on that boat. You got hit on the cold without us. I don't care what happens to you. Take care of your family. Oh, you <laughs> run, run, Yandy. The sooner to meet your doom. Oh, no. Lamont, are you here? Oh, Lamont. Yes, Margot. I'm quite all right. Oh, thank heaven. Look, Margot. The captives have taken their captor. They've got Yandy. They're tearing to pieces. That would be little less than the thing well deserves. But I suppose we'll have to try and save him for the law. Come along, Margot. We've no time to lose. Well, we've got all those men you saved from the dungeons berthed below deck, Mr. Cranston. The poor devils don't know how to thank you. Take good care of them, Captain. Aye, aye, ma'am. Have you found out yet what happened to Yandy and his men, Lamont? Yes, Margot. One of the men just told me. But he waited until we were well out to sea first. What did they do with them? Well, they didn't pitch them into the sea, as they told us. They locked them in their own dungeons. And it's too late for us to do anything about that now. So we'll have to leave Yandy and his confederates to suffer. As long as their lives last. The terrible fate they designed for others. Thank <laughs> you.